Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It looks like we're, we're full house again, so thank you very much for being compassionately space sitting. <laughs> this actually is the first morning that I don't have to welcome the minister in years. <laughs> and to Hans. Um, it has very, you've very quickly become part of the Beechwood Trinity family, and for that we are delighted. And um, so that probably will be the last time we'll welcome you, actually, but that will be fine. Just a couple of, of intimations. Thank you very, very much for your generosity for the food bank last week. 412 pounds was raised. A superb sum, so thank you very much indeed. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday, and the service, of course, will be at, at Ely. Can I ask you if you wish to attend that service to phone me or email me very, very quickly? We hope we'll have about eight or nine wreaths to be laid, and that's a lot of people. It will be lovely, it will be wonderful. Um, so please, if you'd like to attend the service, please get in touch with me very soon. There are copies available to be purchased on the way out of the door, if, you, if you'd like to do that. And the only other thing is the arrangements for the Sundays in November. November, as you know, has got an extra Sunday. So next Sunday will be at Ely, the 8th. The following Sunday we will also be at Ely, the 15th. And then the next two Sundays, to end November, the 22nd and the 29th, will be back here in Kokonga. There are posters um, showing that, which will be rounding about, and also I think it should be on the website very soon. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Firstly, I would like to say a massive thank you for the card and really generous gift that um, all have presented on your behalf last Sunday. I was truly speechless when I opened it when I got home and I'm extremely grateful, so a massive thanks to you all for that. Um, in addition to the, the remembrance excitement of the knowing which church to go to next week, um, Olive and I have been working with some others on trying to pull together a walk of remembrance to do something that, we, that will mark the fact that remembrance is not being marked in the way that we usually do it. So in each of the three villages, there will be a, a walk of remembrance. It's a guided act of remembrance where there will be prayers, there will be readings, there will be links to poetry, and there will be relevance linked, if you like, as to why we do remembrance. So here in Kilconquhar, we're going to do it from the War Memorial to the Kirk. In Collinsborough, there'll be a loop created, exact route to be discussed and walked this week, um, which will lead from the school to the community hall, and I know they're next door, so it's a loop, um, and in Ely from the War Memorial to the Kirk itself. It's posters and lampposts, it's got interactive QR codes that the young ones can scan if they want to, if the schools come out and participate in this. The families can do it and you can scan it with your mobile phone and there will be voices familiar uh, reading some poetry, sharing some of the prayers, sharing some of the readings. And it's a way for the church to be part of the community and to really show that even though things are different, we can still try and meet that or, or serve a need that can fall within that gap that has been created by the current restrictions. So as we come to worship this morning, we hear the words based on the psalmist. Give us your lantern and compass. Give us a map so that we can find our way to that sacred mountain, to the place of your presence. Help us wherever we are participating in worship today, whether it's gathered here or at home. Help us to enter into a space of worship, to meet with you, our exuberant God. Help us enter into a space where we can offer thanks and praise and we can learn more of you, our magnificent God. Let us worship God. Let us worship God as we reflect on the words of the first hymn, after which Robert will play the tune for us. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, 
kneels in humility and washes our feet. Oh, what a mystery. Meekness and majesty. Bow down and worship. For this is your God. Let's join our hearts and minds in prayer as we draw near to God. Let us pray. Wise one, your knowledge is complete and perfect in every way, and we seek to learn and become wiser. We come before you this morning as willing students, with ears open, ready to listen, and hearts softened to hear the words of your wisdom for us today. In your wisdom, you gave each one of us gifts and talents to help build your kingdom. And we're sorry for those times when we failed to use all that you have given us. And we are conscious that there are also times that we have chosen to ignore the needs of others and instead been foolish and selfish. Forgive us, O Lord. We desire wisdom this morning. We desire to be more like Jesus, and we long that our words and our actions reflect him greatly. We recommit ourselves to the work that you have given to us, using all that we have to bring the kingdom of God to this space and to our communities here and now. 
So hear us as we pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now turn to our words of scripture this morning. It's found in Matthew chapter 23 verses 1 to 12. And Meg's going to read for us using the message version of the Matthew chapter 23, reading at verse 1. Now, Jesus turned to address his disciples along with the crowd that had gathered with them. The religion, scholars, and Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line but they don't live it. They don't take it into their hearts and live it out in their behaviour. It's all spit and polished veneer. Instead of giving you God's law as food and drink by which you can banquet on God, they package it in bundles of rules, holding you down like pack animals. They seem to take pleasure in watching you stagger under these loads and wouldn't think of lifting a finger to help. Their lives are perpetual fashion shows, embroidered prayer shawls one day and flowery prayers the next. They love to sit at the head of the table at church dinners, basking in the most prominent positions, preening in the radiance of public flattery, receiving honorary degrees, and getting called doctor and reverend. Don't let people do that to you, put you on a pedestal like that. You all have a single teacher and you are all classmates. Don't sit, set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save that authority for God. Let him tell you what to do. No one else should carry the title of Father. You have only one Father, and he's in heaven. And don't let people manoeuvre you into taking charge of them. There is only one life leader for you and them, Christ. Do, not, do you want to stand out? Then step down. Be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you get the wind knocked out of you. But if you come, you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. And to him be all praise and glory. Amen. quite a quiz, but what we're going to do is we're going to have a wee think about some questions. And the first one's probably easy, it's just a bit of a memory test for you. Um, last week we challenged you to think about that two metre social distancing and how we can fill the space compassionately. Did we manage it? Some people had emailed through the week and said, well that was a big challenge, not sure how we're going to do it, but I'll try it isn't easy. And that reading this morning, it's not about us showing off how we filled that gap. The reading reminds us that we're all called to try and do it. And how you did it, and how you did it, how I did it, and how anybody else has done it, if we've done it, we have done it the way that we feel that God's called us to. Now the questions get a bit trickier. 
Who is the best singer or band of all time? Feel free to feel free to, to give an answer if you've got one. Andrea Bocelli. The Beatles. The Beatles. Queen. Beauty of the Okay. <laughs> yes. Cliff Richard, right, okay. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Frank Sinatra. I don't think we're going to reach consensus on this. <laughs> Too many options here. Okay, I want you to really cast your minds back. For some that's further than others. <laughs> Who was your best teacher when you were at school? Music. Your music teacher? Geography teacher. So we've all the different things, and, and the last question, and this is probably quite contentious in the East Nuke. Um, what's the best sport? <laughs> Golf. I, I didn't expect that to come as a response. Uh, so that's that's interesting. Yes, sport would be golf. But I do wonder if we all have different favourites of different things at different times. If you're trying to do the housework, maybe an upbeat band like the Beatles gets you into the mood and the Hooverin's done at twice the speed of maybe some of the more classical pieces of Andrea Bocelli and others. In school, perhaps you had a favorite primary school teacher because that teacher really engaged you at a younger age, but whenever you were in secondary, the geography teacher and the music teacher were the ones that, well, they really inspired you and pushed you within an area or in a curriculum subject that you really felt a gift and skill in. And sport can change as well. I'm not sporty in the slightest, so I'm not going to pretend that mine has changed. But maybe in your younger days, the contact sports like rugby was the, the sport for you. But as you get slightly older, you realise I'm slightly more frail and easily broken. So golf might become the, the sport of choice. Different things change and different things happen at different stages in life. Different personalities speak to us for different reasons and for different things. As a minister and when I was a teacher, lots of people thought I had the answers and I knew everything. Wrong, I don't. But do you know what? Each of us gathered here and watching at home brings something unique and something special. We each bring our own favourites, whether it's a, a musician, whether it is a sport or whether it is a memory of schooling. We each bring something special and something unique. We're all given skills, gifts and talents that maybe some people and some of our friends and some of those sitting around about us don't have. And that can cause a bit of a problem. Perhaps some people, because they've got them, think they're better than others. But you might be sitting thinking, well I'm not worth anything because I can't do that. Not as good as them. If you can do things that others can't, doesn't mean that you're better or that they are lesser than you. In today's Bible story, the religious leaders of the day thought that they were the biggest, that they were the bestest, and that they were the mostest important. And what Jesus turned around and said to them was, No, you aren't. You're not. Let's look at each other. Let's look at what each person can bring. However you chose to fill that two meter compassionate space out, doesn't matter. The fact you did it is what matters. Your opinion is always valid, but so is other people's. And you can't forget that some other people with differing opinions from you doesn't mean anyone is more right or wrong. It's an opinion. It's a feeling and we can't argue 
with those things. But we need to understand different things and different people's opinions. Jesus, ultimately, in this passage, is teaching us serve each other with what gifts God has given you. Be open and be receptive to what others can do for you. Our next hymn, we're only going to do verses 1, 2 and 3 and I'm choosing and picking out some lines. Some folks have emailed and said we really loved being able to follow the service online afterwards because we could <coughs> the songs in the comfort of our own home. So the words will still appear on the screens at home. But the next song talks about serving us and how we can be like Christ to each other. And it says, pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. It's not just about serving, but it's about being served. We must be open to that two-way relationship. You see, we're all pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We're here to help each other to walk the mile and bear the load. Because we will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you and speak the peace that we all long to hear. So brother, sister, let me serve you. Verses 1, 2 and 3. Let us pray. Speak to us, O God, you inspired the text, so may we receive inspiration through the word so that we can be for you, living completely for you. Amen. Moving places, and in our case moving quite uh, one side to the other, brings with it a variety of different challenges, both practically and interpersonally as well. Practically, lots of advice on who the best butcher is, where the best bakery is. Can Tesco deliver the same as Sainsbury's can deliver? Who is the best home delivery provider of a supermarket? Which route is the best route between different villages? And interpersonally, who knows what about what? And who knows a different version of the what? <laughs> Lots of giggles at that one. <laughs> but you see, people can offer opinions. And it's based on different things. It can be based on lived experiences. But do you know what? All opinions matter. Opinions matter and so does obtaining a variety of different ones. It opens our minds. And sometimes you just need, as the old advert for lockets was, suck it and see. You just try it yourself. In teaching, there was a piece of unwritten advice that was often given to newly qualified teachers. And if you were in schools, you may have heard this. It was, never smile until Christmas. <laughs> now, for those who did nothing to do with school, you might think, well, that's horrible. 
Imagine not smiling to Christmas. It wasn't intended to be taken literally. It was a way of developing your classroom persona, your professional persona. Without becoming robotic, it was a way of allowing you to establish yourself as a teacher. And it was so that your personality wasn't taken for granted by the learners. And sadly, in some cases, by your colleagues. Now, in today's reading, we can see the personalities and the characteristics slowly emerging from the Pharisees. And it it emerges because they have a perfectly reasonable rationale. God gave the law to Moses. Moses handed it down to Joshua. Joshua, in turn, transmitted it to the elders. The elders, they passed it down to the prophets. And the prophets are the ones who handed it on to the scribes and the Pharisees. Logically, that makes sense and is the reason it's 100% correct. Am I right? Well, no, not really. That's not really what Jesus was getting at in this passage at all. What Jesus was saying was the principles that were first handed down from God to Moses still stand. The principles are what are to be adhered to. And there are two great principles that come from that. The reverence and its respect. The scribes and the Pharisees, they, however, made it something that it was not. They built thousands and thousands of rules around respect and around reverence. But very quickly they became outdated. Yet, they continued to teach them and hold people accountable to them. So these rules, far from sharing the love and being welcoming, far from having the arms opened to embrace and show God's love, they became a stick with which to beat people and say they weren't religious enough. So how on earth do we continue to show our communities in a relevant way, reverence and respect, if all we're going to do is focus on archaic things? If we focus on the archaic, we are just like the Pharisees that Jesus is speaking to. We're dragging people down. So like in the Bible blether, there were a series of questions. These ones here, there's more questions, but they're multiple choice. Um, When I say multiple, there are two options. Question one, does your faith bring you joy or misery? I'm glad that there were murmurings of joy. That's good. Question number two, does faith help people or haunt them? Does your help them? Good. Does your faith carry other people? Or does it expect everyone to carry you? Now, the last one there, there is probably a third option, which is it's a mutual support because we exist as a family of followers. You see, if your faith takes on the negative response to each of those three questions, it's no longer a true religion. It's no longer a loving faith. It's a controlling, burdensome, and depressing organization which has lost focus upon the principles that we should be standing on. So let's look at these principles. The first of reverence. How can we in 2020 live out this principle that in itself could be seen as quite archaic? The original meaning is honor God's name, honor God's day, and honor parents that God has blessed us with. 
You see, the contemporary version and application of this is not so far off, I don't think. Honour what God is telling us to. Honour what God is telling us to do and don't use his name in vain. And this links to taking and spending time with God. How do we know what God is saying to us throughout our normal lives and our daily weeks if we don't take time with him? In 2020, we've probably had more free time than we've had for many, many years. It's got busier, it's got busier, it's got busier, and all of a sudden in 2020, we found ourselves from March through to the summer months in lockdown with lots of time. Yet we all found ourselves really busy, didn't we? Whether it was sorting the garden, whether it was clearing the loft, whether it was creating piles of stuff to take to the tips when they eventually opened, we did lots of things, but how much of that time did we invest with God? You see, we can find many excuses for us not to come to church. There were only a limited number of seats. We can make excuses for not watching online. Nah, there was a, another program on the TV. But it doesn't need to be done on a Sunday. Those who have participated in our acts of worship and joined in online have done so throughout the week. The numbers of views have gone up throughout the week. People have still taken time to be still and to draw near to God in an act of worship and to participate with us at a different time. They took time to engage with their church community, to know what is happening with those who are able to gather. They've taken time to listen to what God has to say to them. Now, honouring parents, that could be literal. But what about those in our midst this morning who care for others that are not blood-related? What about thinking of this as perhaps adopting the care that we can have for other people and being a parent-like figure? Whether we call it pastoral care, whether we call it corporate parenting or supporting others, working with others, all of that is honouring God. It's honouring His work and it's honouring what we've been called to do and shows a parenting style which if we emulate what Jesus did, we'll go some length to sharing love, not rules, in reverence of our God who saves. And so we move to the, to the next core principle of respect. Traditionally, respect was based on an individual's life for that person's possessions, for that person's personality, that person's good name, and also how much you respect yourself. And that was the reason for sharing about the classroom persona and how people appear. You need to have a respect for yourself for others to have a respect for you. In today's context, we are dominated by the, the louder voices for those who are really loud but might not have the brightest ideas. You only need to look to some of our political spheres and on our social media platforms to hear that those who tweet the most might not have the best things and the, 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 all the answers. But we need to be quiet sometimes to hear the opinions of others. There is so much disrespect in our world today because people think they are better than other people. People think they are above the rules. They think they are the ones who are always right and nobody else can possibly have an opinion. And then there are those, those who are quiet. Then there are those who are the people who are very, very busy. They're always busy doing something. But they're not the ones who stand up and say, look at what I've done. They are the ones 
who are persevering, perhaps without encouragement, because nobody really sees them. We don't stop. We don't look. We don't acknowledge. And what about God, our Heavenly Father? Do you take the glory and the praise that people say to you, well done, that was a great thing that you did. Thank you for going and doing that job. Thank you for looking out for that person. Do you take that glory onto yourself and say, well, look at me, I'm brilliant. I did that. Or do you say, thank you, but it's not by my own strength that I can do these things. It's a really hard thing to do. I absolutely agree. It's not easy for us to deflect that type of... Lots of us don't like being said, well done. Oh, it, it's okay. I didn't really... But if we're taking that and giving thanks to God that he sustained us through that, maybe that's a way that we need to approach things in life. We need to reflect how God has blessed our lives and therefore in turn how we are blessing others. As we explored in the Bible blether earlier, so many people consider themselves better. They think that because they've got an opinion, nobody else can have one that might be of equal value or woe betide even better. Jesus is saying no to all of that. In this passage, Jesus makes it so clear to us all. There can only be one truth and only one person who is telling us the right things. And you know what? That isn't the loudest voice or the rudest person in a meeting. It's him. It's Jesus. Jesus is telling us in this passage that you can only have one teacher, and that's Christ himself. The Pharisees drew attention to themselves with their fancy prayer shawls and their beautifully lyrical prayers because they wanted the attention on them. The good deeds of Christians, if noticed, should be used to glorify God, to honor God, not themselves as the Pharisees of the teacher and the teachers of the law did. So how are you showing reverence and respect towards God and yourself today? The intention of the Pharisees was to dress in a way that made them better than others. They wanted to be heard. They wanted to be the ones to be seen and to be followed and not direct the attention to God. So who are you listening to? Are you listening to the booming voices that appear in our news channels and in our social media? Or are you taking time to be still, to be quiet, and listen to the truths whispered quietly by a, livi a loving, living, faithful Father? May God bless everything he has whispered to us through the preaching of his word this morning. Amen. Let us take time now to reflect on what God has whispered to us.
Let's come before God once again in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God and wise teacher, we thank you this morning for your patience. The patience that you have with each of us and for your mercy that you share and show to us when we get things wrong. Help us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord, as we offer these prayers for each other, for ourselves and for the world. We thank you for the men, women and children who wisely use the gifts and the talents that you have given them. We thank you that they are using these skills, gifts and talents to make our world a better place to live in. We thank you for all those people who are gifted teachers, who inspire others in their learning, who support them when things are getting tough and tricky. Help them to help others grow in their faith and in all manner of ways. We thank you for those people who are the enablers in our midst, the people who will draw alongside someone to help them discover their gifts and their talents that perhaps they weren't aware of. Open ears and open mouths so that people can identify how best they can serve and work for you. Loving God, we pray for the people who have been denied from using their gifts and talents that they have and who long for the opportunity to use them, but they just can't speak out. Strengthen them, we pray, and enable the enablers to draw alongside them so that we can truly build your kingdom here on earth. We pray for all those people who spend so much time envying the gifts of others that they fail to see what's right in front of them and the gifts that you have blessed them with. Help them to see their, their own selves, to respect themselves and to take pride in themselves so that they can go and use their skills and their gifts to your glory. In the silence, Lord, hear the prayers of our hearts. Take what is on our minds, we pray, and comfort us with the knowledge that you deal with it all. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, in a world full of people who love to proclaim their own wisdom, but live foolish lives, we pray that as your followers, we would strive to be as wise as Jesus and live as he wants us to. Help us all achieve this, we pray. Amen. As we draw our service to a close, we sing our last in our minds, but at home you can join in as loud as you like. But we're singing verses 1, 3, and 5 of Will You Come and Follow Me If I But Call Your Name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? It's a massive challenge for us all to follow when you don't know where you're going. But we don't do it alone. We're all pilgrims on a journey, as our first hymn said. So will you come and follow me and never be the same?
following Jesus can be difficult. It's not always easy to get things right. And sometimes it's easier to look good than be good. Know that as we bring our worship to a close, you are good enough. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, guide you, and strengthen you today, tomorrow, and all days. Amen.